Let's continue with exploring MD settings by uploading an already made fabric from the MD library. So you can get an access on that by going to simulation here in the top right corner, clicking on it and selecting animation that's hidden underneath it. And here we can get access to the library on the left side and we're going to choose this outfit with the white sweater and pleated dress. So just double click on it. We don't need to save it and load the pose. There we go. Once that's loaded, we can go back to the simulation interface. When we have a finished garment like this, there are a few ways in which we can customize the view in the 3D window. The display options for the clothing can be found on the top left side. And if we hover our mouse over the first icon, we can see a number of details that we can switch on or off by clicking on them. So we can turn off and on the visibility of the clothing, for instance. We can turn on the uh, pressure points, but they're only visible if we're under simulation mode. So I'm going to also click this arrow right here so it turns yellow. And now you can see the pressure points that basically mean where the garment is touching her skin a little tighter than the rest of the garment. And let's just go off simulation mode. And besides the pressure points, we can also uh, show or hide 3D seam lines, internal lines, chalk lines. If I demonstrate, the internal lines are right now disabled. And this is how it looks like when they're turned on. And there's also a bunch of other things that we can show or hide, like the 3D threads, pins, buttons, piping, and so on. Some of the stuff we don't even have currently in our scene. But it's good that you know that you can find it right here. If we take a look at the second icon, we can see that the second icon has the avatar display settings, one of the most useful being the arrangement points. And if I turn them on, you can see that our avatar is equipped with these blue dots that are all around her body and are meant for wrapping clothing around her. So if I quickly demonstrate that by going to the 2D window and grab the rectangle tool and just create a very simple rectangle, it doesn't matter what the dimensions are at this point. And while having the rectangle selected, if I hover my mouse around these blue points, you can see that the rectangle is wrapping around her body. So let's say if I wanted to make a turtleneck of this sweater and I wanted the rectangle to go around her neck, I can simply press this arrangement point right here and I have it wrapped around her neck which makes my work and my sewing process extremely easier. Alright, now I can take my transform pattern tool and delete this. Let's go back to our avatar displays and switch the arrangement points off. Now another thing that's also very important is the x-ray joints that are meant for posing. See, you can click on each and every one of them and move them with the gizmo. And the last icon shows the avatar's measurements. So I'm going to switch all this off. The third icon lets us choose between different textures. So thick textures if we're applying thickness, maybe a monochrome variation or an invisible one. Here we can see the mesh and here we can see the constraint map. And if we examine this map, we can see that the color red indicates where the clothing is tighter to her body and the, the green indicates where it's looser on her. So let's just go back to the default textured surface option. And the last icon is for the avatar. We can have different settings. And that pretty much wraps up the left toolbar in the 3D window. Now if you take a look at the 2D patterns on the right, you can see that this side is made up of patterns in the front and this side contains patterns from the back. The top or the sweater is made from a simple shape using the polygon tool and the dress you can see is made up of the belt that has four rectangles and the dress itself that has two rectangles, both made with the rectangle tool. Now once we have the patterns lie down like this, we can take the transform pattern tool that I have selected right now and its shortcut is A on your keyboards and I'm able to 
pick up the patterns and move them around. And once I move them around in the 2D window, you see that it has no effect whatsoever in the 3D window. So you can arrange them in any way you want, but I encourage you to find a system that works best for you. But usually the back patterns are placed to the right of the front patterns, just like they are here, simply because it's easier when we're sewing. Apart from moving around the patterns, we can also rotate with the help of this tool. If I hover my mouse here, I'm able to rotate the pattern, and I'm also able to resize it using these points. Now that we are familiar with the separate pieces of patterns, let's have a look at how they're stitched together. We can make the seam lines visible in the 2D window by going to the Edit Sewing tool available under B, Shortcut, and we can see that if we inspect the front pattern, that the front two patterns are connected together in the middle, and the same is with the back patterns. And if we take a look at the collar, the collar is also stitched together to the front patterns, and the front sides are stitched to the back sides. Now I can also see these seam lines in the 3D window if I pull these patterns apart. I will be able to see them here as well. Now the reason why I can do this is because I'm off simulation mode. As you can see this arrow is grayed out so that means that I'm currently not simulating and if I press space bar or simply press this arrow right here the patterns jump right back together generating this effect but of course I don't need to stick to this result I can also come into the 3D window and simply pull and grab the garment and alter the overall effect and shape of the clothing with this as well. So this is very, very neat. This is a very cool feature. And let's say if I want to have these sleeves pushed up a bit, I can simply just come in and manually push them up. Like that. As you can see, while I do this, they're slipping kind of down a little bit, and if I want to keep them in this position, I simply press W while I'm pulling and grabbing, and this creates a pin that's indicated by this red dot, and that means that this position is going to stay in its place. This point right here will not change its position, so I can put pins basically everywhere to kind of secure this position of the sleeves because I want them rolled up like this. And if I want to remove them, I simply go Control and W on my keyboard and I've removed all of them. If for some reason we're not happy with the draping, maybe our garment is not simulating properly and we would like to go back to the beginning, we can reset the patterns by using these two buttons and we have the Reset 2D Arrangement and the Reset 3D Arrangement. And let's just go off simulation mode. If I use this button Reset 2D Arrangement, you can see that it puts all of my patterns back into the position as they are in the 2D window. So you see the position is exactly the same. It's just a simple copy. If I go back, and if I use the other button, the Reset 3D Arrangement, now what it should do, for some reason, this preset, this presetted uh, sweater and dress does not generate the same effect, but it should go back to the position that I put my patterns right before simulating in the 3D window. For some reason, this presetted outfit doesn't achieve that, but it should work flawlessly once you're doing your own garments. So let's go back with Control and Z. And in the next clip, we will be talking about wind and light properties.